This video shows you how to set up the EMG biofeedback device. If you've rented one, may I just take the opportunity to remind you to please keep all the packaging material, including the small plastic bags that contain cables and small parts. A USB dongle looking something like this serves as a software license key. It looks like a memory stick, and indeed that's what it is, and it holds the software that you'll need to install. But besides that, you'll need to connect it every time you run the software. It's worth quite a bit, so please don't forget to send it back at the end of your rental, along with the device and its associated parts and packaging. I cover software installation and setup in a separate video. This device is called a GP8 amplifier. It can measure EMG for muscle tension, and it's also used for HRV biofeedback, which we'll cover later in the course. The GP8 runs on batteries. More on this later. EMG is short for electromyography, and as you'll know by now, it's an electrical correlate of muscle tension. It's actually a kind of voltage measured from the skin. We're talking about a very small voltage, measured in microvolts, a microvolt being a millionth of a volt. It's therefore not a trivial thing to measure, and later I'll talk about some of the things that can go wrong. The signal actually originates from the nerves that cause muscles to contract. The stronger the signal in these nerves, the stronger the muscle contraction, and also the higher the voltage that we measure. The GP8 connects to the computer via its USB cable here. You don't need to do any driver installation for this device. Just a word about care for the device. Please be a little delicate with the cable. Don't tug on it and don't coil it too tightly and don't coil it around the GP8 box. To measure EMG, we need three sensor cables. Here they are in their packaging as you'll find them in the rental device. There's a black one, a white one and a green one. The black and the white are known as the active sensors. When we place them on the skin, we're essentially measuring the muscle tension between these two. So how we position them matters. The third cable, the green one, is known as the ground. It's less important where it goes. Anywhere near the others is fine. The three cables plug into the front of the GP8 device like this. On my rental devices, I've labelled the sockets W, G and B for white, green and black. Just a word about care of the sensor cables, because it is possible to damage them. Never pull on the wire part of the cable when you're disconnecting them, either from the skin or from the amplifier. Instead, always take hold of the plastic casing or housing part at either end. Never bend the cable too sharply, for example when you're coiling them up because kinks will adversely affect the signal. Don't wrap them around the amplifier box. Returning to the placement of the sensor heads, if we put the actives at either end of a muscle, then we'll measure the tension in that muscle. We're going to be working with a wrist placement, which means one active sensor on each wrist, below the palm, around about where you'd feel for a pulse although the exact placement is not that important and it doesn't matter which way around the black and the white go as long as they're on opposite wrists. Clearly, this isn't along the length of a single muscle, but it gives us something that's more useful, if less precise, which is a general measure of all the tension up the arms and across the shoulders. Even the neck and the upper chest can contribute. Most of the muscles working the fingers and hands are in the forearms, so we get these too. Clenching your fists will make the signal go up a lot. This is a useful measure for us because this is where we tend to feel stress. The green ground sensor can go on either wrist, close to one of the actives, but not touching. The simplest way to attach the sensor cables to the skin is using these self-adhesive snap-on sensor heads. They have studs which just snap into the heads of the cables and they're pre-gelled which means that the surface is coated with a gel which is electrically conductive, allowing the EMG signal to be picked up much more accurately. You just peel off the plastic cover and stick them on. For the most accurate reading, it's best to clean the skin where we'll put the sensors. This is because oils naturally found at the surface of the skin can impede the signal. 
It's best to use rubbing alcohol. Just a fairly quick rub of the skin will suffice. If you've rented, I've included a couple of alcohol swabs for this purpose. Now, that said, for biofeedback purposes, we don't really need the most accurate measurement. We just need the signal to show relative changes in muscle tension, which we'll still get even without a perfect connection. So in practice, you don't need to clean the skin every time. We can even get a fairly good signal without using pre-gelled snaps. A very viable alternative is to use these non-gelled reusable snaps. Again, they just snap into the cable heads just as before. They aren't self-adhesive, but you can just hold them against the skin using wristbands. Just make sure the ground doesn't touch the active. It's definitely not as accurate this way, but for most people it's good enough for biofeedback, where you're less interested in precise measurements and more interested in relative changes in muscle tension. I suggest using pre-gelled self-adhesive snaps for your first few sessions, then once you've got a feel for EMG biofeedback, doing it this way will be fine. Later in the module, we'll work with another placement, the forehead placement. The only thing that's different in terms of the hardware setup is where you attach the sensors to the skin. Put the three sensors horizontally across the forehead with the green in the middle and the two actives either side. Again, it doesn't matter which way round they go. And again, you can use either pre-gelled self-adhesive snaps or the dry reusable snaps held in place with a headband. The muscle in the forehead is called the frontalis. It runs top to bottom, which means we're not putting the active sensors along the length of it, but across the breadth of it. In terms of which muscles we're measuring, we're complicating the picture, but in practice it's very useful for us because the forehead placement gives a generalised measure of muscle tension for the whole head, as you'll find out when you experiment with it. You'll see that many of the muscles in the face contribute, especially the jaw muscles. Again, this is good for our purposes because we can detect a stress response and we can also detect facial expression of emotion. We can even detect subtle movements of the tongue and lips and the mouth that are associated with inner speech. Now you're ready to try out a muscle tension biofeedback session. Before closing, I need to say something about what might go wrong. I mentioned earlier that the GP8 runs on batteries, size AAA. If you've rented, I've included some rechargeable batteries plus a charger. I find these work well enough and usually last for several weeks before needing a recharge. If the batteries are completely flat, you won't see any trace at all in the software. If they're partially flat, then the signal can misbehave. In the software, there's a simple battery checking application. Now, two AAA batteries normally give you three volts and it's slightly less for rechargeable batteries. My experience, anything above two and a half volts is okay. You'll notice the software also gives you a measurement of something called impedance, which is to do with the quality of the contact between the sensor and the skin. For our purposes, it's not relevant. You don't need to worry about the impedance. The battery compartment is in the bottom of the GP8. The cover slides off. If you need to replace batteries, please be careful to insert them the right way or you risk damaging the device. The next problem to mention is electrical interference. This is potentially the most serious as it's sometimes difficult to control. Because we're measuring small voltages, the device can pick up extraneous voltages not coming from muscles but from the electrical mains and other electrical devices. Electrical fields travel through air Interference is when the device picks up these fields. Interference shows up in the biofeedback software as a suspiciously high reading, usually a stubbornly high reading that won't go down no matter how well you relax. The EMG signal naturally varies a lot when you move around, and if you don't see this, it's likely that it's because of interference. You can sometimes see interference as a peak in the spectral analysis display of the software, which is the bottom chart. The peak will be at the mains frequency, so in the UK 50 Hz, or perhaps a multiple thereof like 100 or 150. 
Now for EMG biofeedback, the software focuses on a range of 100 to 200 hertz, so a little peak at 50 isn't going to matter. If you do get some interference, then you can try to exclude it as best you can. Make sure the GP8 box and all its cables are as far from anything electrical as you can. You can try moving it, for example, put it on your lap below the level of the table to see if that helps. If you're using a laptop, a common source of interference is the transformer, which is the box that's part of the power cable. Try running the laptop on battery and disconnect the power cable from the wall. Some rooms, and even some houses, are naturally prone to interference. Try moving to a different room if you have to. Ultimately, you may find that EMG biofeedback is not really viable in your house because of interference, which is unfortunate, but also quite rare.